Hi, Derek Gelderman here. Excuse me if I cough occasionally. As you can see from the background, I'm here in Rotterdam. And why have I chosen to send you this next instalment from, from Rotterdam? Well, Rotterdam's the famous place where had they where they had the kid putting his finger in the dike to hold the water back and to prevent the Netherlands from flooding. That's exactly the scenario that I see in so many practices in Australia. Practices that have the analogy of putting their finger in the dike to stop their practice drowning, drowning in due to lack of clients, jack lack of revisits and, and all those sorts of things. And they have this finger in the dike marketing attitude. Now, I know it doesn't apply to you, but it does apply to a lot of practices in, in Australia. So let me just expand on that a little bit. Over the last few weeks, you've seen a number of things that we've talked about. Let me just tie that together a little bit. In my, in my world, in my model of the world, there are three kinds of marketing. There's new client attraction, there's marketing to existing clients to retain them, and then also to encourage them to use more and more of the services that your practice has that most of your clients don't even know about. And then there's the third part of the marketing trilogy, the third part of the, the, the third leg of the chair, if you like, and that's referral marketing. That's getting your existing clients to refer more clients to you. So you could call that new, new client marketing, new client attraction, but I think it's so important that it deserves its own specific leg of the chair. Let's talk about those three things very briefly. New clients, number one. So many practices spend so much money on attracting new clients, whether it's through Google, the Yellow Pages, their website. Uh, in, in fact, there are 79, that's right, there are 79 ways to attract new clients. That being said, it's depending on what study you read, somewhere between six and 16 times as expensive to market to new clients and get a new client to come in your practice door than, a, than, a, than, than the cost of retaining an existing client. So there's so many practices spend so much time, excuse me, that's a car going past over this wonderful wooden bridge that's behind my camera person, Jennifer. Um, so it's between six and 16 times as as expensive to attract a new client as it as it is to retain an existing client. So I say, see so many practices spending so much time, effort, money on retract on attracting clients and attracting clients and attracting clients without ever having looked at the second leg of the chair. The second leg of the chair which is retaining existing clients. So let me ask you this, do you have a system in place to to retain clients? Do you have a, a system in place to to go to lost and lapsed clients and, and resurrect them if you like, or to do client surveys that show you how um, happy or unhappy clients, existing clients are and, and doing something about it? Do you have a strategy to ensure that you have an 85% recall rate on your vaccinations? That's, that, that's all part and parcel of retaining existing clients. And yes, I did say 85%. Most of the clients that I work with will have a recall rate, whether that's for vaccination or car trophy or senior screens or whatever it happens to be, of about 85%. Now, in Australia, on average, that runs at about 40 to 50%. And you can get that up to 85% very, very simply. The other thing is, do you have a system in place for pre-booking your clients? So a client comes in today and and their dog has an ear swab or a skin problem or a fluorescent eye stain or whatever, is that client locked in for their next appointment before they walk out the door? If not, why not? It's so simple and the clients expect it and they'll devour it when you offer them that. And then dental programs. So we're, talking, we're still talking about retaining your existing clients. Do you have about 10% of your practice income coming from dentistry? Do you have a senior screen that brings a senior screen or a senior program that brings in another 10% of, of your practice income or an individual vet's income? Do you have a chronic medication program in place? Do you have a, a feline wellness or a cat wellness uh, program in place? Because cat owners feel that we don't love them anymore, that we've left them out in the cold. And when you specifically target your existing cat clients and 
ask them to come back more often and offer them more services, then they'll repay you in, in leaps and bounds with, with the rewards of, the, of their custom. So we've touched a little bit on new clients, we've touched a little bit on existing clients, and the third leg, leg of the chair, referral marketing. Well, have you ever thought about writing a nice letter to your existing clients, your, your A grade, your top 10 or 20 or 100 existing clients and say, hey, look, um, Fred or John or Joe or Josie or whoever, I know that you're referring me already. Um, I know that you're talking about me to your friends and on Facebook, etc., etc., but I probably haven't made it very easy for you to do so. I haven't ever given you a referral card to give out to, to your friends or, or um, a, a special business card that you can hand out and, and write your name on it so that we can thank you. When you do that, you will, again, get heaps of those clients referring you actively, not passively, actively to your friend, to their friends. Now what's really interesting is there's been a study done on how many of these cards you need to give an existing client. Now, if you give one business card or one referral card to an existing client, they won't do anything with them. They'll put them in their pocket, their wallet, their purse, their handbag, put them on the fridge or whatever, they won't hand them out. But studies have shown that when you give out three, four, five, or six, and, and the ideal number is between four and five, business cards or referral cards or what have you, then those clients will actually give them out. Think of it yourself, think of it logically. If someone, your doctor, your dentist, or your, your, your car mechanic gives you one business card, what do you do with it? You put it away. But when you've got three or four or five, you've got to find something to do with them, so you give them away. So that's it from me uh, today from, from Rotterdam. We'll, we'll catch up in another week or so, but if any of those things that I've talked about have, 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 have piqued your interest, for example, 79 new ways of getting new clients, uh, dental programs, uh, senior programs, um, client retention programs, well, send me an email or let me let me suggest that you come along to the workshop that we're having in Sydney in October on the 27th, 25th and 26th, Friday, Saturday. We'll address a lot of those issues specifically at that workshop and you will go away with a specific strategy in place to, to, to have a dental program, to, to have a senior wellness program, to pre-book your clients so that they come back for the care that you know they need and they want to pre-book so that you, uh, sorry, to, to book your vaccination so that you get an 85% um, re-vaccination rate or, or a re-call rate on anything else you want. So we'll, we'll give you the strategies exactly on how to do that. If you don't want to come along, I've given you lots of hints and tips and clues already and, and obviously, obviously over the last four to six weeks as well, giving you lots of stuff that you can work with and so you can get that finger out of the dike and not have your practice you know, drowning in a lack of work, if that were. So, thanks for writing down, thanks for listening, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.